He put his faith in my cousin, and left me behind now my dad is paying the price, and I've built a life he can't tear down. I'm a 28-year-old man who has had a rather difficult life, particularly when it comes to family. My mother passed away while giving birth to me, which, I suppose set the tone for the relationship I had with my father. He never really moved past her death, and always treated me as if I were the reason she was gone. Naturally, I have no memories of my mother, but I've heard many stories from relatives about how thrilled she was to have me. She had always longed to become a mother, and had faced years of fertility struggles before finally conceiving me. This knowledge only makes the whole situation more heartbreaking. She finally achieved her dream, only to have it tragically cut short. As I was growing up, our home was filled with photographs of my mother. My father kept everything just as she had left it, almost as if the house were a shrine to her memory. Her clothes remained hanging in the closet, and her books still lined the shelves. It felt as though I was living with the ghost of a woman I would never have the chance to know. Sometimes I would sneak into their room just to touch her belongings, trying desperately to forgrudge some sort of connection with the mother I never met. My relationship with my father however was entirely different. He was there in the physical sense, but emotionally, he might as well have been on a different planet. He went through the motions of parenting, ensuring that I was fed, clothed and made it to school on time, but there was never any warmth or affection. No hugs, no words of love, not even a simple pat on the back for a job well done. I always felt like an outsider within my own home. Most days my father would barely even look at me, let alone engage in conversation. When he did speak to me it was usually to criticize or compare me to my cousin Jake. Jake's father, my uncle, died in a car accident when Jake was seven so my father kinda took him under his wing. I still remember the day we received the news about my uncle's death. It was a rainy Tuesday afternoon, and I was sitting at the kitchen table, working on homework, when the phone rang. My father answered and I watched as his face crumpled while he listened to whoever was on the other end of the line. That was the first and only time I ever saw my father cry. After hanging up the phone, he sat down heavily at the table and stared off into space for what felt like hours. Jake began to spend a lot more time at our house after that. I was excited at first. I thought that having another kid around might make things more fun and might even help my dad open up a bit. But it didn't take me long to understand that Jake's presence made my relationship with my dad even worse. He often asked, why can't you be more like Jake? Or Jake would never do that. It seemed like Jake was the son he had always wanted, and I was just there. Jake was sporty, friendly and charming, which I wasn't. Jake was the life of the party, while I was shy and liked to read. It was delicious for my dad. I worked really hard to make my dad happy it never seemed like enough. I tried to learn about his interests, got good grades and joined every sports team. My dad thought Jake could never do a bad thing. He would compliment Jake on the smallest things, but I never got any credit for my own accomplishments. I won a science fair at school when I was about 12 years old. My project was a complicated model of the solar system that could move. I worked on it for weeks. I could hardly wait to tell my dad. I thought this would finally make him happy. His laughter and talk with Jake about a football game made me laugh when I got home. I told him I won, but he just nodded and went back to talking to Jake. It felt like I wasn't there at all. It gets worse as we age because of the bias. People always made fun of Jake and me, because we were in the same grade. I did better in school than Jake did in high school, but my dad would always find ways to downplay my achievements. Well, Jake's got more important things to think about than just grades, he would say. During one parent-teacher meeting, my English teacher raved about an essay I'd written. She told my dad it was one of the best papers she had ever seen from a kid my age, and that she thought I would make a great writer. My dad just grunted and asked if this would help me get a big grant for sports. The teacher looked confused. And I was so embarrassed that my face burned. In spite of this, there remained a part of me that still yearned for changes. I reasoned that perhaps everything would be fine if only I could locate the appropriate thing, the magic key unlocking my dad's adoration. I pursued that unattainable dream all of my childhood, and during my teenage years. When it came time for college, the true kickback was I had pushed my ass, enrolled at a decent university, and been ready to launch my future. Though I knew money would be limited, I reasoned my dad would contribute at least somewhat. Boy I guess I was mistaken. The day I overheard my dad on the phone with Jake informing him he would pay for his whole college tuition, will always be with me. My pulse dropped. My dad looked at me like I was insane when I asked if he could also assist me out. Jake needs it more than I can afford to pay for both of you, he remarked. That's exactly how my college dreams vanished. I attempted to make it work nevertheless. Working evenings and weekends I had a part-time job at a nearby diner. I applied for every scholarship I could locate, but it was not enough. The strain was intolerable. I was juggling my classes, working enough hours to pay for things and still finding time to study and sleep. There has to be a give. After the first semester I found myself having to drop out. On my own I couldn't afford it. The part-time work I could find hardly covered tuition. Jake was living it at a famous university, completely on my dad's money. Meanwhile, he would share images of his elegant dorm room, his spring break travels, 
The new laptop my dad had purchased for him for college on social media. Every post was like a knife turning in my gut. That moment was the breaking point for me. I gathered my belongings and left home, cutting off all contact with both my father and Jake. It was incredibly painful, but I knew I had to escape that toxic environment. I could no longer bear to live in the shadow of my deceased mother and the cousin who had somehow replaced me in my father's heart. The past few years have been challenging, to say the least. I've taken on various odd jobs, doing whatever I could to make ends meet. I've waited tables, worked in construction, pulled night shifts at gas stations, anything to ensure I had a roof over my head and food to eat. It has been difficult, especially when I see updates from Jake on social media about his incredible college experiences and the great job he secured after graduation. But despite everything I'm gradually building a life for myself on my own terms. I now have a decent job, not something extravagant, but it covers the bills. I'm working as a manager at a local bookstore. It's not the career I envisioned, but I find solace in being surrounded by books all day. In addition I'm taking night classes at the community college, working toward the degree I've always wanted. It's not an easy journey, but at least I'm making it on my own. Along the way I've made some great friends, people who accept me for who I am, not for who they want me to be. They have become the family I never truly had. We have weekly game nights go on camping trips when we can afford it and support each other through through thick and thin. It's far from perfect but it's mine and that makes all the difference. I thought I had left all that family drama behind me, but life has a funny way of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. Yesterday, I received a call from a number I didn't recognize. When I answered, I was stunned to hear my dad's voice on the other end. It had been three years since we last spoke, and now he was reaching out for help. I'm not entirely sure how to feel about this, but one thing is certain I am no longer that kid desperate for his approval. Update 1. It's been a week since my dad's unexpected call, and I'm still trying to process everything that happened. Speaking with him on the phone brought back a plethora of memories, the majority of which were not good, but his voice was different. Older, more worn out, more desperate, he began with small talk, asking how I was doing. It felt awkward and forced, as if he was trying to pretend the last few years hadn't happened. Then he got to the real reason for his call. He needed money, and a lot of it. At first I was too shocked to respond. This was the man who had never given me a dime for college, who had chosen my cousin over me time and time again. And now he was asking me for financial help. Oh, the irony was not lost on me. When I finally found my voice I asked him why he was coming to me. My chance really owns me. What about Jake, his golden boy? Shouldn't he be the one to help out? My dad fell silent for a moment, then mumbled something about Jake being busy with his new job, and not having the means to help right now. I couldn't help but laugh. After years of being told how much better Jake was, how he deserved the opportunities I didn't know I was supposed to be the one to step up. I made it clear to my dad exactly what I thought about that idea. I suggested he go talk to Jake instead, since he had always been the favorite anyway. There was a long sigh on the other end of the line. Then my dad started to say something about how he regretted some of the choices he'd made, how he wanted to make things right. But I cut him off. I told him it was too little, too late. I'd spent years trying to earn his love and approval, and now that he needed something from me, he was ready to play the remorseful father. I ended the call shortly after that. I experienced a range of feelings as soon as I hung up. I turned him away, and part felt bad about it, since he was still my father. But a bigger part of me felt relieved. For the first time, I had stood up for myself against him. I didn't cave into the need for his approval that had driven me for so long. The next few days were tough. I kept replaying the conversation in my head, wondering if I had done the right thing. I thought about all the times I needed aid, and he wasn't there. Sure it was the college tuition, but it was also the little moments when a child needed their father. School activities, girl advice, and learning to drive. He had been missing throughout. I remembered my first heartbreak when I was 16. Her name was Sarah and I thought she was the one. We had been dating for 6 months when she broke up with me for one of the football players. When he barely looked up when I walked in. I stood there for a moment hoping he would ask what was wrong. But he just grunted and told me I was blocking the screen. I went to my room and cried myself to sleep that night. Or the time I got my driver's license, most of my friend's dads had taught them how to drive, but not mine. I had to beg my neighbor Mr. Johnson to teach me. When I finally passed the test, I came home excited to share the news. My dad was in the garage, working on his car with Jake. I showed them my new license. Jake congratulated me, but my dad just nodded and went back to explaining something about the engine to Jake. I don't think he ever let me drive his car. Another thing that made me think was what kind of trouble he was in to need my money. My dad was always very proud, almost too much. It has to be important for him to reach out in this way. Even with everything, I was still a little worried about him. But then I thought about all the times I had been worried about my own future, because I wasn't making enough money since I had to quit college. What did he care about then? I had to work things out by myself, which I did. I made my own life without his help. 
Why should I help him right now? I remembered the year I lived on my own after moving out. In order to start over, I moved to a new place where no one knew me. I got any job I could find and found a tiny studio room that I could barely afford. I cleaned during the day and worked as a bartender at night. I was always tired, but I was able to get through it on my own. When I got home from work at the bar some nights my feet hurt and smelled like smoke and beer. I wondered if I had made a mistake. I could have put my pride aside, stayed home, and tried to work things out with my dad. But then I remembered being judged all the time, and never feeling good enough and I knew I had made the right choice. I started to feel better about my choice as the days went by. I understood that by not giving in to his request, I was finally giving him a handle on things. I wasn't the same kid he used to be able to ignore and push around. Today I'm an adult, I choose for myself, and I don't owe him anything. I couldn't help but be interested though. What had exactly caused this to happen? What happened that Jake, the perfect child, couldn't or wouldn't help? There were times when I wanted to find out more about what, what was going on with my dad and my cousin, but I hesitated. Did I really want to open that can of worms? Was it worth potentially stirring up all that old pain and resentment? I thought about getting in touch with Jake's mom, my aunt. Even though she was sometimes cold she was always nice to me. She might understand what's going on. The last time I saw her though, was at a family get-together right before I left for work. She gave Jake a big hug and told him she was proud of him for getting into such a good college. She only gave me a weak smile and a pat on the shoulder when it was my turn to leave. I made up my mind not to call her. I'm still not sure what to do next as I write this report. A part of me wants to forget about the past, and keep focused on my own growth and life. On the other hand, I can't help but wonder what's going on between my dad and Jake. Now that I think about it, only time will tell if I decide to look into more or not. Update 2. It's been about a month since my last update, and a lot has happened. Despite my initial hesitation, my curiosity got the better of me. I decided to find again to find out why my dad suddenly needed help and why Jake wasn't stepping up. I started by reaching out to a few family friends who were still in touch with my dad. At first they were reluctant to share much, but eventually I pieced together a pretty clear picture of what had tried already got. I called Mrs. Peterson first. She had been my mom's best friend and had always been kind to me growing up, what she seemed surprised to hear from me, but was happy to chat. After some small talk, I steered the conversation toward my dad and Jake. Mrs. Peterson hesitated, then sighed deeply before starting to fill me in. It turns out that my dad had gone all in on supporting Jake, far beyond just paying for his college tuition. He had helped Jake with the down payment on a house, bought him a car and even invested in a business venture Jake wanted to pursue. To do all this my dad had taken out loans and maxed out his credit cards. He was drowning in debt, all for the sake of giving Jake the life he thought he deserved. Mrs. Peterson told me about a conversation she had with my dad a few years back. He had been bragging about Jake's successes, talking about how he was going to be a big shot businessman one day. When she asked about me, my dad had just shrugged and said he hoped I was doing okay. The indifference in his voice had shocked her. Next I reached out to my old neighbor, Mr. Johnson, the one who taught me how to drive. He had always been observant, and filled me in on some of the more recent developments. Apparently Jake had convinced my dad to invest in a startup he was launching with some college friends. It was some kind of tech company, but Mr. Johnson wasn't clear on the details. What he did know was that my dad had remortgaged the house to get the money for the investment. The kicker? Jake's new job, the one my dad had proudly boasted about, wasn't going as well as expected. The business venture had flopped, and Jake was now struggling to make ends meet himself. When my dad turned to him for help with the mounting debt, Jake apparently told him he couldn't spare anything right now. Mr. Johnson had overheard an argument between my dad and Jake just a few weeks ago. Jake had come over, driving a flashy new car and my dad confronted him about the failed business and the money he'd invested. Jake had yelled something about how it wasn't his fault the market had changed, and that he'd pay my dad back when he could. Then he peeled out of the driveway leaving my dad standing there, looking utterly defeated. I have to admit, a part of me felt a twisted sense of satisfaction. After years of being compared to Jake, constantly hearing how I didn't measure up, it turned out that the golden child wasn't so golden after all. My dad had placed all his hopes and resources into Jake and now those hopes had crumbled. But mostly I just felt tired, tired of the endless drama, the lingering pain and the constant what ifs. I thought about how different things could have been, if my dad had chosen to one destined me the way he did in Jake. Maybe I would have finished college, and perhaps I'd be in a completely different career today. But then again, maybe I wouldn't have learned the invaluable lessons I did about self-reliance and perseverance. I remembered the tough times after dropping out of college, how I juggled multiple jobs, often scraping by on ramen noodles and cheap coffee. I thought about the long nights I spent studying after exhausting shifts, driven by the determination to improve myself, even without the benefit of a formal education. It had been a hard journey, but it shaped me into the person I am today. I wasn't sure if I should tell my dad what I had learned. After some thought I chose to text him. I told him I knew what was going on with Jake and the bill. I didn't offer to help, but I also didn't brag. 
What I really said was that I hoped he could see now that the decisions he made had effects on both of us. After a few hours, he answered. He said sorry and a lot of things in a long message. He told me that he knew he had been unfair to me, and that his grief over my mom's death had made him lose his temper. He talked about how proud my mom would have been of the man I'd become, even though he wasn't a great dad. He asked if we could get together and talk. I thought about that message for a long time before I decided what to do. I still had a little boy inside me that wanted his dad's love, so there was a part of me that wanted to say yes. I imagined a time when we'd get together talk things out, and our relationship would be fixed magically. But as an adult who has had to work hard for everything, I knew better. I reflected on all the important milestones in my life that my father had missed, like my high school graduation, where I scanned the audience, hoping to catch a glimpse of his face, only to feel the sting of disappointment. I thought about my first apartment, which I furnished with second-hand items and a lot of determination, and the promotion I recently received at the bookstore, a moment I had no one to share with except my friends. In the end I decided to respond to my father, letting him know that I was not ready for a meeting. While I acknowledged his apology, I made it clear that words alone could not erase the years of neglect and favoritism I had endured. I expressed my need for time and space, and I told him that he needed to respect that boundary. I also made it abundantly clear that I would not be bailing him out financially. His decisions had brought him to this point, just as my decisions had led me to where I am now. It was not my responsibility to fix the mistakes he had made. As I sit here writing this update, I feel a sense of relief. Unhappiness exactly, but as if a weight has been lifted from my shoulders. For so long I carried the burden of trying to earn my father's love, constantly questioning what was wrong with me that made him favor Jake. Now I realize it was never about me at all. It was about his own unresolved issues, his inability to cope with loss and grief. I am uncertain about what the future holds for my relationship with my father, or whether there will be any relationship at all. Perhaps one day we will have a genuine conversation about everything that has transpired. Perhaps not. For now I am focusing on my own life and personal growth. I am continuing with my night classes diligently working toward that degree. I am also building relationships with people who appreciate me for who I am. Just last week I helped my friend Sarah, not Sarah from high school, move into her new apartment. As we unpacked boxes and arranged furniture, it dawned on me that these connections this chosen family, are what truly matter, not the approval of someone who was never able to recognize my worth. Life is not always easy, but I am forging my own path. And for the first time in a very long time, I feel like I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. I do not know what tomorrow will bring but I am confident that I will face it on my own terms, with the strength I have developed through years of self-reliance.